One day of every month, we talk veterans' issues on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 96 1 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I actually have to admit, it was not my idea. Uh, about a year ago, I guess a year and a half ago, I was talking with Don Hall, and of course, uh, Don is a Marine, and Don said, Hey, I was having a conversation with somebody. Uh, would you be interested in talking about some veterans' issues on the air? And I said, Sure. And so, he got together with Cody Cantrell uh, over at uh, the uh, the veterans office here in Twin Falls County, and uh, they put this together. I got to say, they do all the work. I just have to sit here and say, "Good morning, <laughs> uh, Craig." Right? Yes, Craig Bryant joining us today on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio ninety six one FM thirteen ten KLIX and News Radio thirteen ten dot com. Almost five minutes after nine o'clock, and temperatures pretty much now in the mid sixties everywhere across the valley. Uh, we're off to a good start. First of all, welcome. Thank you. We were just talking off air that Greg was going to be here with us a month ago. And then, joy, 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 anybody who's ever had a kidney stone knows exactly what this is like. Uh, it can be a little debilitating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mine, mine was more than that. <laughs> Kept you out of the game for a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, it did. Well, I'm glad you're back. You look great. So, okay. You know, yeah, I'm feeling much better. You, you've bounced back. Um, we wanted to point out today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Oh, everything from, from you know, very burial in various places to benefits and the like. And what you might expect, in fact, uh, if you have a member of the family who served in uniform and then after they passed, what they may, you, you may believe they're entitled to some sort of full-blown military funeral. That probably is not going to happen. Uh, but first of all, you wanted to talk a little bit about Rock Creek Cemetery. Yeah, a lot of people don't even know that Rock Creek Cemetery, south five miles south of Hanson, even exists. And it was a cemetery, the earliest headstone we have there is from 1878 for uh, Anna Jensen and a couple of her kids. So I don't know if it was an epidemic or what, but that went through. Anyways, there's a lot of people buried out there, including the Strickers. We're just a mile east of the Stricker Ranch. And then the other most prominent ones with several headstones are Larson's, Crockett's, Lundy's, whatnot are buried there. Anyway, like I say, we're five miles south of Hanson. And it was always called the Rock Creek Cemetery. And in the late 80s, it was not being taken care of. And so the veteran groups got together and said, if you will deed this to us, we will take care of it. And so they deeded it to the veteran groups in Twin Falls. And since then, we've been maintaining it. And we take no compensation. I mean, we were volunteer our time. And right now, I manage the cemetery. And I've got a couple of veterans that help me. <coughs> and... Uh, Anyway, the, the name, what they did when they took it over, they said, well, we'll keep Rock Creek Cemetery kind of for the west end of the front half because that's been there for over 100 years. In the back, we're going to call it the Magic Valley Veterans Cemetery. Well, I think that confused a lot of people thinking that <laughs> we can't get buried or whatever else. And so we get three signs out there. One says Rock Creek Cemetery. The other one says Magic Valley Veterans Cemetery. And the other one says Rock Creek Veterans Cemetery. So take your pick. But anybody can buy a grave there and be buried there. And so that, that's kind of a thing that confuses a lot of people. I hear that some people get directed out. They say, well, we didn't think we could get buried there, but you can. Anyway, so they we've been around for a long time, and we're open to everybody. Right now, what we can count, we have 126 veterans buried out there. But a lot of the old timers didn't put anything on a headstone, and so we're not sure. But like Herman Stricker, he served in the Civil War and was wounded. We know that. And his son, Roland, served in World War I. So those are a couple that we know. There's 20 that are up front that we know, but there could be more. And plus, 100 or 120 years ago when somebody died, a lot of people drove a wood stake or a cross into the ground. Well, that's long since gone, and so we have no idea who was there, and the records were pretty sketchy back then. And so we don't know for sure. We know there's more people. Right now we have a record of 132 people buried in the front, but no doubt there's dozens more. And, you know, unless you could afford to get a ground-penetrating radar out there, you're never going to know. And we can't afford that. I mean, the only way we generate money is to sell graves. That's it. And we don't take any money. Like I say, myself and the two veterans help me. We're not compensated. The only person that gets compensated out there is when we have a grave to dig and we have to hire a backhoe to come out there. And so we have to pay him. But other than that, we don't do that. And, and then we do get some nice donations occasionally from people. But anyway, right now, 
for a veteran to buy a grave out there is four hundred dollars, and for a non-veteran is six hundred. So that's a real bargain, either one compared to what yeah. most places are. And burial expenses aren't included. I mean, that is going to depend. And and again, dying in this day and age is an expensive proposition. I mean, it's it's very expensive, which is the reason a lot of people now are going to cremation because of the cost. And so that, that would save you money. And again, now they've got the new National Cemetery in Buell that opened a couple of years ago. And that is no doubt cost us some sales of veterans because they can go out there and it's free. And, but there, I mean, there's no way to know what we have. <clears throat> and anyway, so that in the total people we have out there right now, by the count I can have is 312. There was a 138 that we know of in the front part, 152 in the back, and 22 over on that north lot. There was 22 headstones over there, and I'm not sure what went on with that, why that was separate. And some of the old timers have told us that there's a lot more people buried over there. But again, unless you had a ground penetrating radar. Wouldn't it be nice if someone stepped forward and said they'd cover that cost and just well, yeah, we, we would be more than welcome. But, <laughs> but again, it, there's no way. And you know, when you're mowing and stuff, you kind of hit a low spot. Well, that was probably somebody who was buried 100 years ago in a wood box, and it's long since deteriorated, and the ground is settled. But, and again, without that ground penetrating radar, there's no way. You know, you referenced the, the cost of burying somebody. And so when, when my dad passed away, it, my sister and I had to go to the funeral home and and he decided on cremation, and yet you could go with some really elaborate boxes, and then you could, you know, and so the director, funeral director, was showing us all of the boxes, and he got to this one. He says, this is $99. And my sister looked at me, and I had the same look on my face, and she said, yep, that's the one he would have said we should use. Yeah, yeah. He he, he was a real penny pincher, and yeah. so that decision was made, and even his headstone is relatively small. Right. But today, a lot of a lot of the cemeteries, especially the veteran cemeteries, are going with the flat stones, right? Because it makes mowing so much easier. Well, right. And now I know <clears throat> at, at Buell now they're all upright, the standard marble or granite, whatever they are. They're upright with kind of the rounded top. <clears throat> they're all like that. And then they do have a columbarium out there. If somebody's cremated, they can choose to get their urn buried in the ground with a headstone, or they can go in the columbarium, and then. And the section where it's all burials with a casket, again, the headstones are all the same that you see. But the people that are the guy right now that manages that, he came over from Willamette Cemetery in Portland, and he said over there they're all flat. And that's a very big cemetery. But my stepdad is buried back in Minneapolis at Fort Snelling, and they have over 250,000 people buried there. See, they got room for another couple hundred thousand, and, and they're all the upright stones. And so it, it just depends. And I, apparently then the guy that directs everything for the whole West United States, I met him out there, and he said the big cemetery down in Phoenix, the National Cemetery, is all flat as well. And so down at Rock Creek or Magic Valley Veteran Cemetery, we like it when people just get a flat headstone because, yeah, then you can mow and not going around stuff, but we can't prohibit somebody from having upright. See, there's already a bunch there. I think I mentioned this on the air before. I... I when I was working way back east, I was working in a, a radio station in Syracuse, New York, and the local veterans cemetery uh, was on a hill top just outside the city. And so a group of us would go just before Memorial Day to decorate with flags, but the ground was really hard. Mm -hmm. So you would take a, an old butter knife and you'd plunge the butter knife and maybe tap on it from the top of the hammer or you'd use a screwdriver just to get the flags in. But I'll never forget that my daughter was with me. She must have been about 10 years old, and she would just hand me the flags as we'd go along. And I came across this flat stone, and the grave sites, again, were only about $400. And it read Floyd B. Schwartzwalder. Now, Ben Schwartzwalder, as he was known, won a national championship coaching college football. Could have been buried with a big obelisk somewhere, but he wanted to be buried with his fellow, fellow troops because he'd been a paratrooper in World War II. Sure. So he had this <clears throat> simple stone on the ground, and there's nothing, and you'd have to walk through the cemetery and really look hard to find his yeah. his burial place. But it, yeah. it, it, it spoke volumes about how brothers in arms still would like to be with their brothers even in death. 
Right. And it, 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 there were no errors about the man, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, you talk about putting the flags in just a couple of weeks ago to, to put everything out for Memorial Day, the flags. And again, the ground is so hard. You get these tiny little quarter-inch wood pole. You say that the flag is stable. And so I just took my drill and put a three-inch, long three-inch drill bit and just drilled down. <laughs> he had another guy coming behind me and shove him in. And we did the same thing last fall because we do the wreaths across America down there. We've got these quarter-inch steel rods that are called, we put them in a shape of what they call kind of a shepherd's hook up. And then you can hang the wreath on there. Well, that was, the ground was already too hard, so I just got the drill out and went around drilling holes. The guys were coming behind me and shoving them in the ground. It worked pretty good. Because otherwise, in years past, we did have that problem with a lot of the flags broke. You know, yeah. trying to shove them in there and they break. I mean, there's not much to them. And so that's next year, I'm going to have like three drills out there and hand them out. And everybody can just go ahead and do it. You wanted to mention honor guards today. Yeah. Well, the other thing we do as veterans around here is we have an organization called the Magic Valley Honor Guard. And we're at veteran funerals along with whatever branch the veteran served in. So, like, on Friday we had one out at the National Cemetery in Buell. He was a Navy veteran. So they had two active-duty Navy members there that folded the flag and presented it. And then our group has the rifle squad and taps. We fire three volleys, obviously blanks, <laughs> and and uh, and then the uh, appropriate branch, then again, they will fold the flag and whatnot. And people can get confused. I get a lot of calls. I just had one last week from a lady. She said, well, now we want to have uh, honors for my husband. He died in March. We're going to do the funeral now. And I said, well, we're the honor guard, but I mean, I can't arrange what branch would you see. Well, he was in the army. Well, you know, normally the funeral home handles all this. Well, I, I'm going to do it. I said, well, then here, here's the number for the army guys up in Boise. You call them and they can walk you through, but it's much easier and it goes easier if you have the funeral home do it because they do it all the time and, and they know the form that it has to get, the form's different for each one. And they always complain about, like, the Marines, there's a certain form, goes back to Quantico, Virginia. Navy goes to Bremerton, Washington. The Air Force, I don't know where it goes. And the Army, I think, does go to Boise. But it's kind of a complicated thing. And so the more you can do it, and what helps a lot is if, before you die, if you just pick a funeral home out, you say, okay, I want this one to do it. Go down there and give them. The DD-214, which is the all-important form you have to have to get anything from the military or the government. And then they know what your wishes are and that you want to be buried. Like, say, they've already got a grave at Rock Creek or they, or what are, are they going to be registered to go to the National Cemetery. The funeral home knows. And it's much cheaper if you can prepay because then it never goes up. Obviously, the prices increase every year or two. Well, if you don't die for 20 years... You've saved a lot of money, but if you can't afford it, they'll take your information. And at least then, when your loved one dies, you don't have to go hunting around because most people in the military have no idea. They can hear DD-214. They don't know what it is. And without that, you get nothing. I mean, it's like dealing with the IRS when you pay your taxes. If you don't have a W-2 or 1099, tough luck. <laughs> you should probably have this maybe in a strong box somewhere, if not a safe to, to pass yeah, a box. And again, to have a copy of it, to go to a mortuary, I mean, pick one out. And and again, even if you'd move, and, well, then you can go wherever that is, or if you get, you change your mind. But at least somebody knows, because people are stressed enough when a loved one dies, and then they're, oh, geez, where's this, where's that? And then they say, well, I know my husband or my dad, he was a veteran, I have his honorable discharge certificate. Doesn't mean a thing. You know, you're dealing with a government, they make the rules, and their rules are DD-214, or the National Guard is slightly different. They, When they go in, usually they're active duty for six or eight months, and they get a DD-214 for that, but then for the rest of the time they're National Guard, they get some separation paper. And, I mean, that's all legal, too. But for most people, DD-214, it's a one-page document. Everybody gets it, they gets out, and, you know, you can tell your spouse or your kids and you can tell them to your blue but unless you have a like you said a strong box or a file somewhere where they know it's not going to happen yeah i was my dad was very good about this he put everything away 
told us exactly what drawer to find it in. Yeah, that's the way and, to do it. And, and, that, and it just it made it so simple. I mean, we did a couple of few, well, I mean, several over the years, but this year we've done three funerals already where somebody's died and the family had no idea what a DD-214 was, or if they did, they couldn't find it. And they wanted to have the funeral that week. Well, you're not going to get the military to come. So we came as the honor guard. We came, we did our part, and then the funeral home had the flag, and then I just present the flag, because after the funeral, we always present three rounds, saying this symbolizes the firing of the of the. We'll, we'll Rifle volley. Hold that thought. We'll get back to this subject in a couple of minutes. We have a short break coming up. Greg Bryant joining us. And uh, 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, uh, save that phone call, too, as well. Give us a call after the break. We're still at 64 on Magic Valley this morning with Bill Colley on KLIX. Greg Bryant joining us this morning, and we're talking some issues related to veterans and also to burials. And uh, some of the details you need to know, especially if you've got someone in the family, uh, <laughs> who may not have explained all of this to you yet. Maybe a member of the family who maybe told you 40 years ago at discharge too, but still today it might be a little sketchy or forgotten where some of the uh, paperwork and the like could be. It's uh, 23 minutes after 9 o'clock, and we're at 63 on Magic Valley this morning with Bill Colley on News Radio 96.1 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. You wanted to mention how people could get in touch with you too. Yeah, so, I mean, if they're interested in... And checking uh, Rock Creek Cemetery out to buy a plot or whatever else. Again, my name is Greg Bryant. My phone number's been just give me a call. I can meet you down there anytime, show you what we have. And if you choose to buy a plot there, we can set you up. You also mentioned <laughs> that you're not getting paid for doing the funerals. No, we don't funerals. get paid. And, and also, right, so for the cemetery, I put a lot of hours in there in the summer because to water, I'm running, you know, it's 15 miles each way for me to come from Twin Falls. Go down, turn the water, turn it. You can't run it all at once, and then you got to do the back, then you got to do this, and, he, and so I'm back and forth. And then to keep ahead of the vocal population, that's a never-ending job down there. If I didn't do anything, the place would be overrun. Every time I'm down there, I got the poison out and see the new holes, and then, I mean, it's, it's a big job. Anyway, so with the honor guard we were talking about for funerals, we're all mainly retired volunteers, veterans, and we don't get paid anything. The military, they get paid to be there at the funeral. We don't. And so we just had a nice $150 donation here a week and a half ago from a family. But normally we don't get anything. And so, I mean, it would always be appreciated if somebody can donate. And also sometimes when we bury somebody down at uh, Rock Creek, you know, we'll get a nice donation too. So it all helps because we're operating on a shoestring budget <laughs> family should also know uh, we got only got about four minutes to go so they should know that uh, when it comes to benefits um, you know you're not going to get a full-blown military funeral for every veteran no I mean a lot of people think that if you're a veteran everything is paid for and I hear this from the funeral homes around here they say people come in and say well you know my husband or dear old dad he was a veteran so this is paid for no it isn't I mean you have to pay the funeral home the only thing, if you're buried at a national cemetery like Buell or the state cemetery in Boise, yes, that's free. But you have to have that set up before you die. It takes weeks or months or whatever. Stuff to, to buy get a that. casket and all those yeah, things, too. Right, yeah, you got to buy the casket. So when you want to be buried out at Buell, say, or any national cemetery or the state cemetery in Boise, you have to have that set up. It's not going to happen overnight. So if you die on a weekend, you're not going to get buried the next week if you don't have it set up. It's going to be probably months and so have it set up, and to get permission to be buried in a national cemetery, you need to have something called a pre-need eligibility form. And you can do it online at va.gov, and you go into the search box and put pre-need eligibility, but you're probably going to get confused. The easiest thing is to call Cody Cantrell, the county's uh, veteran service officer, or Rob Looney. He's the director of the National Cemetery in Buell. Let me give you their numbers. Uh, Cody's numbers and Rob's is, and again, you're going to have to have the DD-214, and if you want your wife to be buried there, you have to have a marriage license. And so if you're common law, good luck. <laughs> I mean, you have to have the marriage license. It's possible with a common law, but it's very difficult. And so, again, you want to have this stuff and have it set up. And then again, if you go to the funeral home, they know they've got it all set. It's not a problem. They can arrange it with a matter of a couple of days. 
but if you don't, it's going to take a while. And if you can't find your DD-214, again, contact Cody and tell him, you know, look, we can't find the DD-214. He can get it, and I've seen him come in as little as three or four days. So usually you figure two to three weeks. So, again, just figure that. But if you go and you have the stuff set up, and again, have a file at home or a, a strong box or something where everybody knows here's the stuff, or better yet, take it to the funeral home. Again, if you can prepay, it's going to save you a lot of money. If you can't, then you'll deal with that at death. But have people know what's going to happen because you're stressed out enough when your loved one dies and you're, you're not going to know what to do and, and you're going to be in a tizzy. Even if you originally knew what a DD-214 is, you're probably going to be too stressed out to even find it. So yeah, I mean, that, you're that's coming the in best from thing. Family coming in from out of town that's moved away and Right. You've got to figure, you got to go through everything in the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You only have so many days bereavement from your job, and before you know it, the week's up. Yeah, it's a nightmare. And also now with the, a lot of people think that cemetery up in Boise is a, is a VA. It's not. It's run by the state of Idaho. And I think the requirements are much the same to get buried there. Again, I would contact Cody to get set up with that. He can steer you and help you with that. But they charge for the spouse to get buried there where the National Cemetery doesn't. And at right now, I believe it's 800 might be $850 to bury the spouse, but that's still a bargain compared to everything else. So, I mean, just, just know that, that there is two choices here in Idaho, the National Cemetery in Buell or the State Cemetery in Boise. And again, you have to get pre-registered because it's not going to happen overnight. Well, I want to thank you for coming by today. Uh it's all good information, whether it was a month when waiting. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we, we hope you're on the bend and that you continue that way, too. Okay. I want to thank Greg Bryant for dropping by this morning. It's almost 930.